Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the differences between Subaru oil filters and Subaru automatic transmission filters. Uh, a lot of you have commented on my transmission service videos about the filter and asked questions about it. And uh, you know, if you go and service your car and you don't go to the dealership, if you go to the parts house and look up the automatic transmission fluid filter, the spin on on the old 4EATs, uh, they normally give you an oil filter, which is incorrect. If you go to the Subaru dealership, uh, you will see there's a different part number between the engine oil filter and the transmission oil filter. Uh, they look very similar in their dimensions. And they are colored black on the transmission filter uh, because they are made in Japan, Tokyo, Roki. We've covered this in other videos on the blue US made Fram filters versus the black Japanese Tokyo Roki filters when talking about engine oil filters. So what's the difference between the engine oil filter and the transmission oil filter? Because looking at them side by side, like I said, they look nearly identical, both spin on filters. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, other than the price tag, this automatic transmission fluid filter list price is about $36.90, whereas this filter for the engine oil is $6.65. So a lot of people are tempted to buy the engine oil filter to save $30 over the automatic transmission fluid filter. Now, how often is this supposed to be replaced? Subaru says in the service manual that this is a lifetime filter that you should never have to replace it. Um, that was their old uh, blowing smoke, as I would like to say, as they say now that the CVT transmission fluid is a lifetime. They used to say that the old automatic transmission filter was a lifetime. I uh, do not agree with that. Uh, for the price and peace of mind, I would rather go ahead and screw it off and screw it on when changing the transmission fluid, uh, just to have a nice clean new filter ready to go and not one that's continuing to uh, grab particulates and debris and you know stifle the flow and filtration. So I don't know why they ruled it as a lifetime filter. Um, some of you that have the CVT transmissions, modern Subarus, or some of the later model H6 engine Subarus that still had the 5EAT, which was up to 2014 model year, uh, you might note that there was no longer a transmission filter. Uh, no official reasoning I have found why Subaru took the spin on AT filters off of the 4EAT and off of remote mounting them on the H6 version of the 4EAT and the 5EAT. Aside from the hearsay of lube techs and quick lube oil change places, uh, mistakenly thinking this was the engine oil filter and draining the transmission, removing the uh, transmission filter and uh, you know overfilling the engine oil and uh, destroying the transmission. I've seen it happen time and time again. I've had you viewers comment time and time again that you've had it happen to you personally or you've done it yourself personally. I myself find it comical that people can confuse the transmission and the engine, uh, but you know I'm not getting under a vehicle for the first time to service it. So I guess I could see the uh, issue there. I just don't understand how I mean, the transmission's got the CV axles and the drive shaft coming, or prop shaft coming out of it. How do you mistake that for an engine? Uh, plus, clearly, automatic transmission and engine. Subaru tried to make it as dummy proof as possible, but uh, it doesn't always work that way. So, what else is different between these two filters? In a little bit, we're going to cut open. Yes, I'm going to sacrifice this 40, almost $40 filter uh, for your education so we can see the differences internally between the regular engine oil and the transmission oil filter. Uh, aside from the price difference, what else would be a difference between the two? Well, if you look at using as an example a 2004 Outback with a single overhead cam EJ253 engine, uh, the engine oil pump is capable of maxing out at 43 PSI at 5,000 RPM. That's the maximum pressure that the oil pump can push through the engine with engine oil. Whereas you look at the automatic transmission fluid, uh, you look at the AT 
fluid pump looking at doing a line pressure test, you can see almost 300 PSI of automatic transmission fluid pressure. I think the max in, I think, second gear is to about 275 PSI is the upper limit of the specification. Uh, so lots more fluid pressure can go through the AT filter than you'll ever see in the engine oil filter. So I'm assuming, I've not even opened this up yet myself, that it will be constructed with much more heavy duty construction internally. Uh, there's the issue on the engine oil filter with the bypass valve and the opening pressure for the bypass valve, where if you were in high demand for engine oil pressure or flow, the bypass pressure valve opens inside the filter to bypass the filter media and free flow oil as freely as possible when you need it at higher RPMs and higher demands. I would assume that the automatic transmission filter has a higher set on the bypass pressure valve. If it has one, I'm assuming it would have one. But as I said before, I've not even cut one of these open before. Uh, so this is gonna be an experience for you and I alike. So basically talked about everything we need to talk about before cutting them open. So this oil filter is one we used in the engine oil filter comparison that's already cut open. So let's go ahead and grab the engine oil, or the oil filter cutting tool and uh, cut open this automatic transmission filter. All right, guys, we've got the transmission fluid filter cut open now. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the comparisons. I do not have uh, one of this version engine oil filter in the equivalent Tokyo Roki Japanese made filter. So we're gonna use the slightly larger uh, EZ30D. This is the H6 filter uh, that is still made in Japan by Tokyo Roki. They never made a blue US Fram version of it. Uh, so basically between the top plates of the transmission filter and the Tokyo Roki engine filter, basically the exact same construction. Uh, you have six holes here, five holes here, and you compare that to the USA Fram made, and you have, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes. Uh, so the whole amount differs uh, on this size the engine oil filter. Uh, I'm not sure if it uses five as well or if it uses six like this filter. Uh, as we see on the H6 engine oil filter, there's no anti-drain back valve. Uh, the engine oil filter has one and the ATF filter has one. On these filters, on the four-cylinder models of the 4EAT, uh, they screw horizontally onto the side of the transmission case, much how these engine oil filters mount on the H6 engine, whereas these mount in the vertical up and down position as you see them sitting. Uh, I believe on the remote mounted uh, filter set up on the H6 version of the 4EAT and the early 5EATs, this is also mounted horizontally and not uh, vertically. So Moving from there, all the top plates are nice thick steel, basically the exact same construction. As I said, we've got our anti-drain back valves, none on the H6. Uh, so from here, we'll take out the filter media itself. Uh, this is a used filter. I did not cut open a new filter. Uh, basically the same construction between the Tokyo Roki engine and the Tokyo Roki ATF filter. Uh, the Fram filter, the USA one has, of course, the uh, composite cardboard end caps rather than steel like these two do. This also glued together. It also has the weaker, uh, thinner gauge uh, center uh, coil uh, backbone support. Uh, but moving on from there, uh, here's one of the biggest differences. Hopefully you can see that. So there is our bypass pressure valve for the engine oil filter. Uh, the one for the four cylinder engine oil filter is a little bit different. It's built into the spring on the bottom of the can, but it has a bypass pressure valve nonetheless. Now we do have our 
spring in the bottom of the can here, and we have our spring in the bottom of the can here. Uh, but this is the big difference with the ATF filter. There's no bypass pressure valve. It is an open hole, free flowing. So it doesn't filter all the fluid 100%. There is this hole constantly allowing some fluid to bypass the filter. Uh, I'm assuming that would be for the higher operational PSI of the fluid moving through this filter compared to this filter, uh, which I knew there'd be some kind of difference. I wasn't exactly sure what. Uh, as far as I can tell with the naked eye, the filtration uh, media is the same uh, on a non-use filter here compared to this one. Uh, but that is our biggest difference. We do not have the pressure check valve. Uh, so you do not want to run an engine oil filter on your transmission on these cars, mainly due to this, that will stifle the flow of the ATF uh, from the pump throughout the transmission and can cause you some issues. Uh, so really quickly to round out the video, I've got two Fram oil filters. They're both engine oil filters, uh, but they came off of the 2005 LL Bean Forester that uh, we did work on. I believe we did head gaskets on it and several other services. Uh, but when I got the car, it had been serviced at a Walmart service center and they had installed a Fram Core 6607ACC filter on both the engine and the transmission. We're gonna cut them both open. Uh, they've been out in the weather. I meant to do this video long ago. It's been about a year or so. We might not get accurate, um, an accurate look at the difference between what the filter fared with ATF going through it at higher PSI compared to what the filter fared on the engine with oil going through it. Uh, but I'm gonna cut them open and we're gonna cut to those here in a second and see if there's any notable difference or any damage in the one that was run on the transmission. All right, guys, got both of these cut open now. As far as I can tell, remember this was the engine oil filter and this was the automatic transmission oil filter. Uh, I don't know how long they were run on the vehicle. Walmart uses a blue tamper pin on the drain plug to mark them. And uh, they had taken that tamper plug and written in large letters, oil on the oil pan and trans on the transmission pan. So all I'm assuming is that when the person took this Forester into Walmart, for an oil change, they, like many others, drained the transmission, realized they screwed up, and uh, threw two cheap Fram oil filters, one on the transmission, and refilled it, and then did the engine oil change as they should have. Uh, so, like I said, I don't know how long it was ran with the filters, but as we can see, this one must be the engine oil filter, this one must be the ATF filter. Uh, let me see if I can get that brightened up a little bit for you. That's awful dark. There we go. Uh, I'm not seeing any kind of damage to the one that was ran on the transmission other than right here, uh, some of the uh, composite cardboard end cap is starting to pull apart. Uh, but without the reference of the mileage they were ran on there and you know, any other information. Uh, we don't have much to look at here. Uh, the pleats look like they're okay on both. There's no signs of collapsing like the fluid built up, uh, fluid pressure built up too high in the filter. Uh, it probably just had that bypass pressure valve open all the time uh, because I think these are rated at like 20, 25, 29 PSI, something like that. It's been a while since I did the oil, pr uh, oil filter video, so I can't remember exactly what the bypass valve pressure is for Subaru engine oil filters. Uh, but long term, I would personally buy the Subaru ATF filter that does not have the bypass pressure valve, uh, just so I don't have to worry about the filter uh, stifling flow to the transmission and causing any issues. It's worth the $30 extra premium price for the ATF filter that is correct for the transmission uh, rather than running a generic oil filter on it. So that basically does it for the video. A little bit of education for you guys between the differences in the oil filter and the transmission filter. 
and the fact that we no longer even have them on modern Subarus. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.